And now we come to the last part of our um, meeting. Uh, it's the discussion. And we think that this uh, last offer, so to say, uh, of our dessert is not actually only dessert. It may be also in a sweet form or in a salty form. And it's called weathercock. So we can look at different uh, places and uh, questions, um, questions of all sorts, which can be uh, discussed or hopefully answered uh, by the people who uh, have given uh, the, uh, their presentations. So I will add one sentence or two sentences to uh, the presentation about Malach. I think it's really an amazing effort, but uh, uh, I feel that the most important part of the activities are those that, are, uh, that address the teachers and students. I have seen at our... Um, yearly uh, conferences of Malach, how uh, important the connection to the teachers is, how the teachers use the material. I think this is really marvelous. That's really a wonderful outcome, or one of the outcomes of Malach Center. Yeah, I, I must only confirm that. And we are very happy that we are, uh, we were, we have been able to build this um, transnational community of educators who are using those materials, yeah. uh, especially yeah, the colleagues from Ukraine, Slovakia, yeah. Hungary. Yeah, uh, there have been joint projects and the topics in those countries and in our region in general are unfortunately still not irrelevant. So I do believe that we try to support the third goal of the university in this sense with our own activity and provide it with the capacity to have an effect. Yeah, this is really wonderful. Um, yes, please. I, I will Francesca. start. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, I have a question uh, addressed to uh, Michael for the Czech National Corpus. Of course, I it was immediately drawn, my attention was immediately drawn to the fact that there is a resource, uh, a diachronic resource for Italian. And uh, I tried to search it uh, via the virtual language observatory and uh, at least uh, from what I can see I couldn't find it and uh, I, it's because uh, just to give some context we are trying to make an inventory yeah. of yeah. resources in Italian that are offered by other centers so if you can uh, just uh, let us uh, tell me something more about it. Uh, the, the, the diachronic corpus of Italian is actually uh, very new. It has been published like uh, two weeks ago or something. So, uh, so that's uh, yeah. So that's that's the one reason. And uh, the second is uh, virtual language observatory uh, requires us to uh, share the metadata with you. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so we we, we uh, haven't done this. Yet. Thanks. Anyway, that uh, was very interesting to find out. This is a task for future. Yeah, Francisca. Unmute myself, yeah. I, yeah. Um, yeah, returning to the Malach collection, uh, I, uh, I also did a check on the VLO to see what you can find there. And there is some uh, information that can be uh, identified through the VLO. But I was also wondering, and, and if I would have more time, I could find that myself, I suppose. But whether any of the clarin tools have been applied to that collection and if, if successes can be reported there uh, so that we could um, start planning similar um, applications for other interview collections. Yeah, that's for you, Yishi. That's for me, all right. Yeah. Uh, currently, um, there are certain restrictions in terms of the data that uh, we are- I know, I'm aware of that restriction. But if, if you internally did some experiments and could indicate which tools in Claren are suitable for this type of interviews, then we could maybe apply them to the other interview collections and, and well, stimulate um, people to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we are um, mostly looking for um, tools that enable uh, automated transcription, uh, machine learning based transcriptions of mm -hmm. uh, this type of linguistic resource. 
uh, uh, we have been also uh, trying to progress gradually in these terms and with the colleagues from Pilsen, it's true that uh, they are developing, as far as I understand, their own linguistic models. Um, in terms of um, uh, looking through uh, the offer of uh, Clarin, we are regularly trying to think about different applications and certainly uh, there are tools for automatic transcription of interviews and linguistic um, resources that we haven't really touched yet in terms of the languages, the source languages that are there. Um, on the other hand, it is true that this is a very decentralized effort. Um, the fact that, for instance, the VHA itself has performed a transcription of all the interviews in German, and we do not really have our in-house tool for automated transcript in German yet, though through the Clarin tools, actually the switchboard, you can reach a point where you can find language models implemented in a pipeline where you can, uh, if with a little bit more of technical knowledge, you can actually do that based on mm -hmm. the source material. But I, I think that we have to address one important point and we have a very, very good collaboration with uh, the Yale University currently. Uh, we're running a joint project on the Fortune of Archive transcription together with the colleagues in Pilsen. And also uh, there were efforts with uh, the VHA to somehow um, bring in together who's doing what and not to double the work and to share the results among ourselves. Mm -hmm. But because of the fact that uh, the data uh, sources are so large and sometimes we are just not sure who's doing what, we are progressing very slowly also. Uh, I do believe that there have been numerous projects within uh, our institute and uh, our university that implemented this type of data for the research somehow in collaboration or in co-implementation of the tools that were found and that are to be found in Platin. But maybe Professor Haich would be the one who could inform you a little bit more about it since he's been with the project from its very onset. So yes, we are looking at that direction to summarize my very complicated and uh, hard to understand answer. And uh, we are also trying to evaluate how what is the amount of uh, human resources that we can allocate to that? As you know, we are a very small center and we are trying to fill in quite I, I, pictures. I, I, yeah, oh no, I know. Um, and um, actually I had a follow-up question, but I won't take all, all, the, all the time, and namely about the, um, the possibility to use the transcripts as a basis for, for example, information extraction, which is, uh, I would be interested in seeing good examples uh, for, for interview data, but let's do this offline. Uh, thank you for your, yeah. So maybe just one uh, one very short uh, uh, answer that since Yiri called <laughs> upon me. Uh, in fact, uh, the Pilsen, we, we do have the Pilsen speech recognizer as a service in, in Lindat, uh, but, and it was, it was in part developed on the Malach data, but uh, since as, as Yiri said, uh, similarly to German, the Czech, uh, all the Czech interviews have been also manually transcribed. So for the users, since we have the manual transcription, it doesn't make sense to show them the lower quality automatic transcript, even though originally we have done it. But, uh, uh, you know, but, but since we have a better version, you know, namely the manual one, because there are not so many Czech interviews anyway. Uh, so we are using that. So, we, so, so to answer your question, no, at the moment we do not have a result of a tool uh, usable through the Malach interface, but um, it, at, at some point, we actually have used the data for developing it. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, if there are no, no questions uh, right Papa, now, yes. Yes, then, then maybe, maybe I can give, give a small demonstration of some of the aspects that were discussed in various contributions. It will take about a minute and somebody can prepare more questions during that time. Then I will share my screen and, and I will show you, uh, I will try to show you, uh, let's, let's try to see the whole screen. Hopefully you can see my, my web browser now. Yes. And I can, I can try to show um, two things. One is now I'm at a Prague dependency tree bank consolidated in the repository. And if I go to an older version of it, Rebank version 3.5. Now you can see see this this area here that says uh, resource is also integrated in following services. This is something that that, that we have discussed. Um, that 
This is a place where you can download the tree bank. Down here, down here you can you can actually get the files. But we also tell you that the same corpus is, for instance, available in context for search. And I'm directly in the context, and I can search that particular data set. It's, it's selected here. So that's that's the integrations. The same thing with PMRTQ. I can now I can now search the same tree bank as a, well as a as a tree bank to to create a to create a tree based uh, tree based query. For instance, this is this is a query that gives me annotation of named entities in the tree bank. So that's that's one thing I wanted to show. And uh, well. Are there some more questions uh, in the meantime? A quick question, Pavel. Um, sure. Uh, how many of your corpora are currently in, uh, integrated uh, in the federated content search uh, of Clarin? I, I haven't checked, to, to be honest. OK, so in the federated content search, uh, oh, I think we we integrate uh, basically the context tool. That means all the corpora that we put into context should be integrated with the federated content search. I hope I say that correctly. So the so the, it's a question of what corpora we put into context, but the context itself, uh, the, the software tool should be integrated with the federated content search. So whatever is in the list of corpora in context, should appear uh, integrated in the in the FCS. Okay. Okay. Oof. So, if, so if there are no more questions, then, no more questions in the chat. Okay. Then, then another small thing I wanted to show is just a. This is this is about. You can still see my screen. Yes. Not only the web browser, but you can see see the windows on top of it now. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. So this is something I wanted to demonstrate. It's a very small thing. You can see that the, all the source code is is one line basically. Um, this is a demonstration of uh, what Jan described uh, as a soft. What was it? A service. Yeah. So this is uh, this is the use of web services. So I want to show you that small command, uh, CURL is a Unix shell command that is sent to, uh, sent to this URL. You can see uh, Lindat services UD pipe API and the command is process with some, so I say basically in the command, I say I'm sending some data and I want English model to tokenize tag and parse data and so on. So this is one small command. And that command can be integrated uh, in the operating system. Uh, I will actually demonstrate a different one because parsing is, is not so elegant to display. Then I will show you a piece of text. Here I have, here I have a piece of, piece of text from this article in New Yorker. I just, I just took one. One, one paragraph from there. And I can say that I want to translate from English into Czech. And the command would be practically the same as, uh, as I've sh just shown you, just, just a few words. And I say translate it into Czech. And this is the result. I get a Czech translation of the text. And I can now let me just put it into a different window, so I, so we can have those those two things next to each other. I can now translate it. So so this is integration that allows you to basically use the services from Linda in any application that you want. So this is just some some text editor, and uh, I can translate from English into Czech. And now that I have it in Czech, which you probably cannot, cannot read, I can actually back translate it into English again. And now we have the original English and this, this back translated English next to it. 
And that can be some kind of check of uh, how, how good the translation performs. If it says basically something very similar, then, then it's probably reasonable translation. Just a small example of, uh, of how beneficial it can be to actually run a piece of software as a web service. Um, okay, so that, that was just a, just a quick, quick small demonstration. Thank you.